I'm going to sort of just roll right into a number of lightning round thoughts that have occurred to me in the last few months while I've been up here talking to a number of people in different faculties and hopefully speaking to a number of the questions um, that the panelists have all raised today, specifically like Pilar, Sarah, I mean Marcus, it kind of goes on. Um, because sort of one thing an artist can offer instead of a technologist is I don't have any solutions. Um, I've just got questions. So I'm going to sort of run through some questions that have really come to mind up here. Um, so we, we collaborate on this project. One of the things that there it is at the Met, with everyone looking very fancy and this very fancy space. And for it, Mark Hamilton from Microsoft generated this. Um, this was projected on the floor, a sort of iterating version. So once you move away from uh, 3D comparisons into 2D comparisons, you start to create very interesting and complicated, turbulent uh, spaces and objects that re can't really exist. Um, so the question for me looking at this was like, what does this interpolation mean? How, does, how do we sort of begin to think about this as a meaningful space? Uh, because the danger is that, you know, as an artist, I love this kind of stuff. I'm like, this is cool. This is the new look. And indeed, there was a show at the same time in the Serpentine Gallery by Pierre Wieg, famous artist using exactly GAN-generated images. That's all it was on big monitors, and the press went apeshit for it. It was the new stuff. But is this just machine wash data? This is the question an artist has to ask. It's a hard question because all through the history of art, we've loved machine wash data. The newest look is not always something that has an informational basis. And this is a question that Caroline Jones raised a few years to me, and I think still it's a very interesting question when we think about this is, if representation is epistemological, in other words, things have to mean something, how do we make this without just being seduced by these kind of super cool surfaces? How do we know they mean something? Um, this is an example that Peter Gallison put forward in one of her uh, PowerPoints of a scientist making you know, the kinds of cool things that an artist like me goes, wow, that is so cool. I guess I'll make a painting like that. Um, what are we doing with these kinds of collaborations? But what is interesting in this question is this, this blurring of boundaries between knowledge states, this idea of turbulence, also seems to be a big problem at every scale. So I think this has a little laser. I'm gonna, so on, we're going from here from the quantum scale to the nano scale, all the way up to dark energy and dark matter. Turbulence is a system that seems to be um, on everyone's minds. It's an unsolved problem, which is, of course, to an artist means there's a little bit of space where an artist might be able to step in and ask an interesting question which is why I came to the, uh, the title of my talk. I work in porous media, and I found this book in the South Station lying on, the, on, a, on a bench, and I thought, this is a sign. Um, that, <laughs> and then I thought, I'll just do the sequel, Turbulence Strikes Back. So a question that I'm going to put in various different ways in the next part of this lightning round, and then hopefully to the rest of the panel and to the audience, is what is a shared theory of picture? Um, how can we generate a mutual visual space between art and science and not fall into this trap of just machine washing one beautiful image back into something that we can look at but not understand or make something that is beautiful to look at but can never be reinterpreted. These are some of the criteria you need to generate a picture state that is, is sort of mutually operable. Um, this is sort of an artist pretending to be a scientist. Um, so science has these beautiful examples like the standard model or the amplitohedron where complex informational states are in fact concentrated into a kind of picture. Um, and this is sort of my version of it. You know, I try my, my, my best, but it's, and so for me, this is a kind of coherent theory of picture. So how can we sort of bring these two things together? Especially, you know, I have a kind of urgency in this because I've got one year here to get the greatest minds in the world to help me figure this out. Um, so one answer is it has to start including all the different kinds of time that are needed to analyze different types of data. And those time scales are as wildly divergent as the physical scales of gravity, weak force, strong force, and so forth. We've got um, another question that I sort of came up with. So if we, if we begin to stack these theories of time, um, each one corresponding to a particular moment in human history, we can start thinking about that latent space that Sarah was talking about as a chronology of picture states out of which we can begin to deduce a feature language. And I'm happy to go into much more detail about this. It's a sort of weird side job of mine is just making diagrams of all human history at the end of the, this. Um, so this was a sequence of diagrams that goes from divinitary states, early civilizations, the kind that would make ewers and pots, to contemporary society where you've got superposition as a sort of uh, local state in physics. Um, so this was an example of an exhibition where I tried this idea of picture stacking. 
pictures stacked upon pictures stacked upon pictures. Imagine if you had all of your graphs, but you sort of put them all on top of each other. So obviously, um, and there's a VR performance as part of it, where you can go inside the picture states and imagine them all in sort of a giant information room. But this happens, right? So as soon as you do that, all the picture states start to pile up on top of each other, and all the participating entities start to affect each other, and it becomes unintelligible. So this is like my first experiment. Uh, this was last fall. So I came here with this very fresh on my mind. So the question I'd like to pose to the audience of geniuses is, you know, is there an answer at a different, by thinking about this at a different scale? Is the, can we model scaling across informational structures? So this is the problem. You know, any kind of informational surface has to maintain these four theories of time simultaneously to be legible. Um, um, so which creates this kind of radiant picture space, which is, starts to become provocatively like a kind of surface, the kinds of surface that you might see in a laboratory at MIT. Um, so I'm wondering if something like this can be manufactured here with your help. So really, this is a kind of blatant plea for help. Is it possible to sort of use new visualization technologies like electron microscopes or dark energy surveys to immerse us within these force relations and model it in a kind of interstitial way. Can we simulate stacked scaling informational and picture regimes incorporating turbulence and ontological and temporal minima? I'm reading that off the monitor down here. <laughs> because it's, a, it's like a mouthful of a sentence, but it's definitely the ask. So you know, in this case, I've shown only five of the picture states stacked against each other. But what I imagine is that at a certain point, they'd start to become legible to each other in time in a way that they could never be in space. Um, and this would allow the sort of potential for a question like this to evolve where you have a sort of correlative space where informational regimes can correlate up to the next scale. And uh, this kind of relational theory would allow a user, for example, to enter VR and wander from the very smallest subatomic space into the nanoscale, into the correlative space of human cognition, into the sort of intricacies of the visual system, reclaiming sort of the byproducts of the correlative space that sort of Marcus talked about how we make things that we see. Um, and then go, keep going on up to the scale of you know, baryonic matter, dark matter, and finally to the scale of dark energy. And the sort of, so what I'm imagining is that the thing that has to be solved here is not can I put pictures of all these things in a row, of course I can, but can I represent the turbulent interrelationships, the phase transitions between the states in a way that is meaningful. And this seems to me to be like a very interesting and potentially cool collaboration. Anyone, anyone out there, you know, raise your hands. I got someone in the back row just raising their hand right there. So that's good. One, yeah, I need probably, you know, like the Magnificent Seven. Um, uh, so that's what I'm looking for, and that's what I think is possible. This is going back to the questions that Sarah raised of like also. What if we could interpolate all human data sets, not just pots to pots or pictures to pictures or sounds to sounds, but sounds to pictures, pots to dark energy, oceans to atoms? That is the promise, I think, of, of AI, is that it begins to present an opportunity for artists and scientists to share a set of informational inquiries the results are going to be wildly different. There is no doubt in my mind that at the end of this, someone will look at what I've done and go, well, that is certainly not science. And I, I would hope not, just as you, wouldn't, you really wouldn't want me to be a scientist, right? And I also think that this is not necessary for artists to imagine that there's a kind of distinction where someone would ever say, well, that is not art. Because the future is where all these things are just completely shared. And we can sort of step into that new frontier, just sort of bringing it all back home now, this is like the slow dance of the, of the event. Um, thinking about how amazing it would be, that's a, an enlargement of one of those fabulous um, glitches in the nanoscale, which to me reminds me just inextricably of the early days of the Old West, but also the early days of movie studios when you would make an idea of the West using that visualization technology you had. So there's a kind of beautiful moment of this like beginning together of a new sort of system of, vision, of envisioning that I think we're, we're at the dawn of. So this idea of a frontier, this really makes me feel about frontiers a lot when I look at these pictures, is something that we can all, I think, kind of embrace artists and scientists together. Thank you.